Now, in having fellowship as a corporate house, they were meeting in each other's houses from house to house, house to house. They fellowshiped one with another. That fellowship was each person surrendering their private interests and uniting under God's purposes. Partnership. So in the corporate fellowship, individualism is not allowed in the corporate fellowship. In the corporate fellowship, what we gather under is the purpose of God. Not the purpose of a man. The Bible also tells us that even though we have corporate fellowship, our fellowship is also with Jesus Christ. I think that's 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 16. No, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. Help me quick, media. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ if you've been in church long enough, 2 Corinthians 13, 14 or 14, 13, can't remember which one. He says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the what? Sweet fellowship of who? The Holy Spirit. So there's corporate fellowship, there's fellowship with the Son, and fellowship with the Son is, is the, it speaks of, about what I was showing us just now, where every one of us becomes a member of Christ. So our fellowship with the Father is only possible because we are in Christ. Are you here? Our fellowship with the Father is only possible because we are in Christ. And the reality of our being in Christ is by the work of who? The Holy Spirit. So it is of the Father, it is in Christ, and it is by the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? So you fellowship in Christ. You are, you are domiciled in Christ. So you are joined to Christ. And then you have the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is working on your inside. He has regenerated your spirit. If that regeneration was actually successful, which it should be successful, one of the signs that new life is at work within your inside will be new desires. New hungers, new appetites. So, by the work of the Holy Spirit, we share in divine nature. And there's no time to show that one. It's in Peter. He says, We become partakers of what? Divine nature. We share in divine nature. We share in divine life. We share in divine glory. And the Holy Spirit is working in us. It is in 1 John chapter 1 that, and verse 3 that the Bible now tells us that our fellowship is also with who? The Father. So we are in fellowship with the triune and then we are in fellowship with one another. In the corporate fellowship, partnership is everybody leaves their private agenda. As we have come to church tonight now, the idea is not what a man has in mind. It's what the Spirit is doing, what he's saying. This is why I have a problem with a preacher who thinks that his primary assignment is to raise millionaires. I have a problem. And somebody will say he, 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 he likes poverty. Oga, if you give me 25 million for land now, we take But you see, God's primary purpose is not to make you rich. You may not like the teaching, but it's true. Do you know, my brother, do you know that the easiest thing for God to give you is money? The least miracle to celebrate is money. And what do you know that there's a way God will lift you? There's a way you'll be deep into God in fellowship you will no longer need to take care of your own needs. You will now find out that you don't need money. You enter a supermarket like this without one naira. But when you knelt down in your closet, the Holy Ghost, you say, Daddy, 
Conflict has finished. Say, eh. Say, do you like Goldie Mon? Say, I've not tried Goldie Mon before. Say, okay, this week I want you to try Goldie Mon. Say, ah. Say, but daddy, there's no money for Goldie Mon. Say, okay, get up, go to ShopRite. Then you wear your dress. Because you know him. Like my brother was saying last week, that once you have become familiar with his voice, you know when it is your flesh. You know, it's a knowing. Then you get up, you go to shop right. As you are walking into shop right, you see pastor at the door. Say, ah, you came to shop right. Say, yes, daddy, I just came. I came to do shopping. And there's no money. Say, hey, come now, I'll pay for you. God has already programmed that person there. Because the least thing God can give you is money. There's an economy in heaven by which a mortal can survive. And you see, I'm not a bad man. That's how Eden was designed. Adam did not need to engage in any transaction to prosper. The system for his prosperity was already provided. God just put him in the middle of it. All God demanded from Adam was, love me, serve me, maintain fellowship. You know why we are pursuing money? Our fellowship life is beggarly. Little can become much in the hand of a man who knows how to wield the scepter of fellowship. Little. Once I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen an fancy altar. The righteous forsaking all his seed begging bread. So what inheritance did the righteous give to his seed that his seed did not need to beg bread? It's not the inheritance of a great house. It's an inheritance of the knowledge of God. That's why he passed on to his seed. And by that inheritance, the seed was able to operate in the same reality that their fathers operated in. Such that they didn't have to carry a plate to beg bread. We've not known the way of the great immortal spirit. That's why when your rent expires, you're in panic. And even the people who insult your God, you are kneeling down to beg them for money. When will you take advantage of what you have with God? You know, we are afraid. We are, we are afraid to be ashamed. We are afraid to be embarrassed in God's name. When we come to the point whereby we are willing to stand under the rain if God does not provide the money to pay the rent, at that point, God will begin to step out of the shadows. Because the second part of, of fellowship is what is called intimacy. There's partnership, there's intimacy. In intimacy, intimacy is the experience of knowing. Partnership is the unity of purpose. Intimacy is the experience of knowing. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1. The Bible will say, and Adam knew his wife. There's a kind of knowing that you enter into when you be become a creature of intimacy. You enter into that knowing. And there are three things that speak of that guarantee intimacy. Number one is vulnerability. Number two is love. Number three is trust. You cannot be intimate with one that you have not become vulnerable with. So my brother, in intimacy, God becomes vulnerable with you. There's nothing hidden. I tell you a secret of great men. They are not talkatives. There are things that God shows them in secrets they can't tell anybody. If they tell you, you will think it's a lie. Is deep, is mysterious, is what they and God share. If a man, you look at a man and you can tell everything about his life, I assure you he doesn't know the corridors where God is hidden. There are things no mortal language can give understanding to. It's just God that shows you. He becomes vulnerable with you. And as you become, he becomes vulnerable with you, you too become vulnerable with him. Show me a man that practices quick repentance. 
I will show you a man who knows the way of intimacy. Quick repentance. He's walking out of his house and he doesn't greet his neighbor and there's a grief in his heart. He quickly says, Lord, I'm sorry. He's right. He's the one that is offended. But God tells him, apologize. He apologizes. He makes an honest mistake. He's quick. Because with God, he's vulnerable. A songwriter says, with you, I can be naked. I'm not ashamed. Men who know the way of intimacy, they don't go to God to form. When they lie down before God, they say, God, not that, they know that they are not providing information to the great immortal spirit. He knows everything. <clears throat> but they know that one of the signs of deep intimacy is vulnerability. You are not, you don't go to God forming that you are a big man. I see the way young people pray. They think they can command God. Command God. In fact, some people think they can manipulate God to do something for them. That God is not seeing that this thing you are doing is manipulation. You, 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 a God that is omniscient, that even knows what you want to think before you have even thought that you want to think it. Intimacy. There is vulnerability. Then there is love. You can't be intimate with someone who you do not genuinely love. And you see, love is not words. I found out by experience that the things that I did that gladdened the heart of God most were not the big things. They were the little obediences. When his voice was not even strong, he just whispered, Kesena, give that person your last money. Little, little things. Today, stay with me for three hours. Little, little things. Kesena, how much do you love me? Can you stop watching football? Little, little things. For years, as much as I loved Arsenal, I turned my back on football. You don't know how I love dance. You don't even love Arsenal. You are fake. Hmm. Gunners for life. Don't joke. Oh. <laughs> I remember the day Arsenal played Barcelona and I was in Portacourt. I was a Christian, a man of God. <laughs> when Arsenal scored, I removed my shirt. <laughs> Eleva Luzana. <laughs> Ran from, because where I was staying, I, I didn't have money to rent a hotel that day. So I stayed with a friend who we did training together some years. My wife will tell you, she can confirm what I'm saying, that the way I loved football before. Ay. So I went to watch, I had to leave his house, he didn't have light, I went to watch it in, in this viewing center. And the match was intense. Arsenal still lost that match later, shall <laughs> The Arsenal fans will remember the match I'm talking about. Champions League final also. 2-1. They beat us 2-1. Uh -huh. I removed my shirt. I ran into the street like a madman. That's how much I loved Arsenal. And the Lord came and said, this football will kill you. Leave it. Rather invest that time in loving me. It was painful. Painful. But football is not a sin. He will not answer again. He has spoken once. Your own is to hear it twice. Love. The average Christian doesn't love God. And you see, when I say these things, people feel that I'm being, um, um, I'm condemning people. The average Christian. There is no intimacy without love. You will love God more than your father. 
love God more than your mother. Love God more than the very life you live itself. You will love God. Whether when you are feeling okay or not, in fact, I say to you by experience, it is behind the veil in that holy of holies that you will learn to find comfort. You'll be wounded. You are in pain. You can't tell anybody. You just enter there. With you, Lord, I can be naked. I'm not ashamed. See the way this person spoke to me. You are not ashamed to cry. You cry there. Even if they have, you, have, you have chest with 82 pack. In that place, in that place, you cry. You cry. When you have wept a while, then you will now hear his voice of reassurance and comfort. 